Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday! It is Friday I am. Hopefully you guys have had an amazing week and we're going to crush it on our last day, finishing off the, the week with a win, starting off with a win in the morning, winning the day, and hopefully all day winning or all week winning the week. Let's get started. The musical. Take three deep breaths in and out, breathing good, breathe out bad. Okay, good, awesome. All right, you guys, awesome job. Just uh, sticking to it, you know, just like really, really sticking with the routine of trying to create that positive mindset as we go into our day. Now we're gonna talk about what we're grateful for. Good morning, Jody. What are you grateful Hi, Jody. for? Hey, hey, Jody. <laughs> I'm Paula. This is Kelly and Michelle. Uh, Michelle, what are you grateful for this morning? Oh, I'm grateful for a five dollar bling. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I saw that you went shopping last night. <laughs> I actually went shopping this morning. And I, oh. was, I was on with her last night, but I kept getting, for some reason, I kept like get losing the feed. So I kept trying to hop back on and I'm all, where, where are we? Like what's sold, what's not sold? Mm -hmm. But I got some really cute stuff. So I love $5 uh -huh. point and I love Jody. So yeah. Awesome. Good morning, Lisa. We're doing gratitudes right now. We'd love to hear what you're grateful for if you're in a place where you can type into your phone. Kelly, how about you? What are you grateful for today? Oh, well, a couple things. I have lots of songs in my head because it's March 1st. And um, so happy March, everybody. Yay. Um, wait, 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 pause. You have a lot of songs in your head because it's March 1st? What does that mean? Like, I that? don't know. Well, oh, because when I woke up my son this morning, um, yeah. I was just waking him up with music like I usually do. Not, not like real music, like me music. And, um, <laughs> and it's his birthday month. So uh, oh, it's my son's birthday, my yeah. too. When's his hey. birthday? Eleventh, um, March eleventh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I so I was singing all kind of happy birthdays, and he's just kind of laughing. So I did my job this morning. <laughs> but oh. my favorite thing that I am most grateful for are my purple pens, you guys. I was I, gonna ask. I'm like, are you holding like eight purple pins? Yes. These I love my pens. I have purple pens everywhere because I love purple. It's my favorite color, and Paula's wearing it today. I got you and got it on, girl. I know, and I don't think I. Oh, I have it on my nails. I got it on my shoes. Um, but I love my pens. They make me happy. I love the color purple. So it's not funny. I just got some new pins too. And they're like fountain pins. So mm -hmm. they have that like old fashioned tip, Oh, you know, and, but they're disposable kind. They're not mm -hmm. like, they're not like hundred dollar pins or whatever, but I absolutely love my pins too. I so kind of like, you say old fashioned. Do you mean like a calligraphy tip? Kind of. Yeah. Like that. Wow. You guys, I'm Fancy. like a pen, I'm like a pen collector. I, I literally, I'm kind of a snob about how they write. Right. So if I find one that I love, I like grab as many as I can and they all sit on my desk. Oh my gosh, you're hilarious. I'm kind, yeah. I'm kind of a little bit of a snob too, but I have, I, my favorite kind is the, is the cheap kind. So here's my yeah, drawer. This is my favorite pen. And it is. Oh my God, look at your drawer. Oh, pretty. Oh my goodness, Paula. <laughs> I oh. love this drawer. That's like a, that's like I'm like shaking. It's so exciting because I used to of, love. Okay, to I'm, that's kind of like a hoarder drawer, except more. <laughs> no, it's like going to the, you know, the where where's that store you and I went to, Michelle, that we got the labels at. Oh, Office Depot. Yes, it's like yeah. going there, and you're in the pen aisle, and I just, I, oh, I love it. It's like oh I stand God. there, and I go, oh, look at all the pens. Oh my God, <laughs> you're the person whose fault it is that there's writing on every single piece of paper that's hanging that's actually like a, here's the pens, here's the notebooks, blah, blah, blah. but you actually- You're allowed. And test oh, all yeah. the pens, huh? Exactly, I do. <laughs> and I'm like, Kelly was here. That's what I used to always write, Kelly was oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. I like the cheap blue ones, the big cheap- Oh, blue. I don't like blue pens at all. I can't. I love, pens. Love. I love blue pens. It has to be black. Uh, I'm not black. Black goes straight in the trash. Black. Hey, blue. Yeah. I don't like, like blue. I don't know. I don't like I black don't pens. Black. Black. It blends in with like if I'm looking in a book, if I'm making notes in a book or on a piece of paper that's been printed out, 
Like it just gets all lost, you know? It doesn't stand out. Maybe you need the goggles. Okay. <laughs> all right, so for me, what I'm grateful for today, I just was noticing that um, oftentimes, not every single day, but a lot, uh, my, my kids just kind of like congregate around my office when I'm getting ready to go on live with you guys. And we just like have like a quick little chat it up in the morning. So it's really cute. I was just like, I love the fact that my kids just like hang out at my office and chat me up in the morning, <laughs> like all three together and petting, petting all the animals in the house and talking about the animals and just like Except having the fun. Snake. Don't pet the Except snake. for the snake. She doesn't bring the snake out in the morning because they're sleeping. Oh, how is the snake Thanks. anyway? Did the snake get better? The snake that she adopted, so she's got two, right? The first one right. was also a rehomed one, and she made that one from sick to healthy, so that was really good. It wasn't really that sick. It just had, like, little mites, mm -hmm. um, but it took a long time to get it get it to where it would eat, so um, that one's, like, totally thriving, and then the one that she got that was, like, totally malnourished at school um, is doing really good. He's gotten, like, before, like, he's a kind of snake that should be really fat in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And then small head, small tail. Um, but he was like a noodle. He was one size all the way. Mm. There was no big parts in the middle. So, and he was like jaundiced. He was kind of like faded and yellow in his coloring. Now he's like dark patterns, dark browns and like contrasting colors and mm -hmm. patterns on his back. So he's, uh, he's doing really well and he eats. Like, oh, like, Mama Mia well. did awesome. Hey, right? did you see what I did there? Did you see what I did there? I did. Oh Mama my goodness. Mia, Mama Mama Mia. Mia. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh my goodness. <laughs> She's like, she started doing this. Um, I don't know. It was like a, for school she was doing, she wanted to turn that snake, the second one, uh, his tank into a, um, like a terrarium basically. So she did all this research and everything, got these special kind of rocks and special kind of soil and she's getting ready to like uh, she's got all these temperature control gadgets inside of there and she's going to make like a little um, like a little mini foresty environment for him oh, with nice. real plants and all that kind of stuff so she's super excited about doing that so that's kind of been cool her room smells like dirt now <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's kind of cool that she's uh, making that up that it's grounded like now herbal, it's earthy right? and grounded super earthy it's very the earthy is a good word it smells like earth. <laughs> but she loves it so she's got both of them now in the same room because uh the the second one passed its quarantine period and he's very healthy so now they can be in the same they can't ever be together because they would like fight the two snakes are mm. opposing kind of you know they wouldn't be friends <laughs> so she keeps them separate, obviously, but um, I wonder if they're... snakes have friends. And does any snake have a friend? Well, on I Raiders mean... of the Lost Ark, there were a whole bunch of them that were hanging up together. When okay, but they were stuck in a pit. <laughs> 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 okay, that's let's not go there. Those snakes were in a pit. That was a movie. <laughs> snake that wasn't real. <laughs> I remember seeing that in the theater and I was a little kid I think and I freaked out about those snakes I do uh, especially that one that's like <laughs> yeah I don't like snakes <laughs> yep in the in the reptile stores I do sometimes see snakes together um in a tank <clears throat> but mm -hmm. Mia says you know whenever, whenever I've gone in there with her she's like that should not be happening that's not normal that's not how they're they would be in the normal environment and um so I don't think that they're supposed to be like cohabitating small right. areas together. They're like kind of like a tiger or a lion, not a lion, tiger, where they're sort of solitary animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so that's what I'm grateful for. That was kind of fun. My my kids really love creatures. Uh, we have two dogs, a cat, and two snakes. And uh, they, my son has a cat, my daughter has two snakes, and then my husband and I have the two dogs, which are kind of the, kids, the kids' dogs too. So uh, we have a lot of animal love going on in the house, and it's one thing that we all really have in common. So sometimes we'll just sit around with one animal or two animals in our arms, and we'll be all like ooing and eyeing and petting them and telling stories about them and stuff like that. And it's cute. That's the same thing. <laughs> well, right, it's funny. Question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, it's just funny. Like when Armando comes home, the dogs go insane. And then he has like little snuggle time with each one. Like, but Choco is really his, like his dog. 
And yeah. it's funny because Choco just like gets on him literally like a baby <laughs> and like kind of puts his arm, like kind of hugs him and, and just goes to sleep like, oh, my daddy's home. Wow. Like, oh, it's really cute. I love it. We, we were reading a study, Aaron and I were reading a study about like the sort of happy hormones that get released when we pet animals. And in the study that we were reading, uh, it showed actually that the animals also have all those like their version of happy hormones that are released too when we pet them. So it's just kind of this totally mutually beneficial <laughs> action that's really, really cute. Just like this connection between humans and and dogs that uh, that really just help us both have a really good day. <laughs> so it's really right. cute. Um, all right, you guys, a question of the day. Are you ready for it? Yep. Ready? Ready? All right. What kinds of conversations do you have with your closest friends? Oh, well, that's these, easy. These <laughs> conversations, this conversation, <laughs> random yeah. question conversations. That's what we have. Yeah, I think I think it just for me, it goes all over the place, like from, you know, the surface level stuff to deep stuff like fears and working your way through problems and, you know, just talking about the world in general. Um, you know, I'm, it's yeah, it's just all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, yeah, <laughs> the same kinds of things I work through my coaching clients with I work through with my closest friends. And, you know, I mean, even simple things like yesterday was my recarb day. And, um, you know, I was, I was nervous about it. I was like, oh, I don't want to go off the rails. And I'm like, you know, typing to you and Michelle and, and you guys are helping me work through that. And it's like, yeah, and it was a successful day. So, you know, just, just things like that. But, you know, um, you know, when you just, when you're dealing with the hard things, you know, that's, um, which is really cool because not everybody can talk about those kinds of things, even with their closest friends. They're, they're like that, the, that, those barriers, it's, it's the authenticity between, you know, like I'll use us, for example, you know, just being able to talk about that stuff and, and opening yourself up to be vulnerable, knowing your friends might challenge you. Um, because I don't have the type of friends that are going to stroke me and go, Oh, I know, you know, get, get on my bandwagon. So, um, they're going to be like, what are you doing about it? <laughs> you know, I was like, well, and you know, and that's, I think one of the reasons you keep coming back to stuff like that is because you know that they're going to help you work through the hard stuff. They're going to challenge you through it. They're not going to just, you know, get, join your pity party. And they you guys certainly wouldn't let me have a pity party. So, um, yeah, those are the Maybe types for of a minute this long yeah. <laughs> yeah you'll tell me okay and now it's time to put your big girl panties on and let's go <laughs> let's dig in yeah that's me what about, what about you michelle um you know it ranges like just from family <laughs> stuff to deep philosophical stuff um you know what's going on in people's lives their struggles um these kind of conversations i mean Normally, it's not just, you know, chitter chatter. It's about something, um, you know, relatively important. Like my grandpa used to say something about, um, oh, how did he say it? That uh, wise people talk about ideas and unwise people talk about each other. So it was like a, from a small age, like I was taught, like, not, you don't gossip, you don't, you know, you're not put here to talk about other people or, you know, to create that kind of energy around someone's situation. So usually it's on a positive note and sometimes it can be quite deep. So, but I appreciate that I have those kind of friends in my life that want to have that kind of conversation. You know, what's mm -hmm. the point of, you know, more shallow conversations or gossip or whatever? That's not really productive for anybody yeah I, I'm not a huge fan of um that kind of jitter chatter now <clears throat> I will say that before I had any depth to me and I'll be real about that I was very surface level person most of my life until I started moving into my 40s because I just I just 
never did anything to improve myself in that way. So I, I mean, I had depth in certain areas. Like I was very strong in my faith. I had a lot of depth there, knew who I was, knew who my value was, value, what my values were and all that kind of stuff. But as a, so on a social level, I really struggled with having uh, relationships of depth there just based on like personality. Um, I could go like, again, certain areas of interest, homeschooling, I was super fanatical homeschool, I was a fanatical religious person for a while. <laughs> I could go really deep there. I could, I get out the conversation. Most people that I knew, <clears throat> not that it was a competition, just saying, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't competing, <laughs> but anyway, um, it was really difficult for me to, to kind of be like on a, just a like person to person, like, who am I, who are you level? And I find that I'm able to do a lot more of that now, but still in a different way. Now I, I prefer, I still kind of prefer to speak more in conversations where there's a little bit more depth and meaning. Obviously there's a place for small talk when you're getting to know new people and things like that. Um, but when it comes to my closest friends, I find myself in conversations a lot with them when talking about things that I I would say are more deep level, like the things that come up, things that they're dealing with that are a struggle or things that they're celebrating that are a joy all come up because they are forward motion. They are looking to the future. They are wanting to build a legacy. They're looking, you know, five, 10 years ahead and, and what they're doing today and how that's going to be shaping those things. And so we have sort of those, those kinds of conversations and sometimes we get caught right in that sort of smaller thinking where we're where we're um, more, you know, more about self than about vision. Um, but, you know, that's what friends are for. We're there to sort of listen and then smack each other out of it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Snap out of it. Uh, but, but I think it's important too, to just allow people to just um, vent sometimes, not like crazy, like super negative, but just like get things off their chest a little bit. Um, so that they can then start like get get the emotional the the heavy emotional stuff just freed from them for a second and just like talk things through. Uh, I know that's important as a coach and Kelly Michelle. I'm sure you guys deal with this as well as a coach. Sometimes like we have to be very conscious to take our hat, hat off and put our friend hat on, right? And not be like every moment we got to go in and get deep and coach them through a situation. Sometimes we just have to be like, girl, I can't believe he did that to you. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, yesterday I saw a thing that sack. said, what'd she say? She said, bye, hacky sack. That's what she called the dog, Jack. Oh. <laughs> oh. Jack the hacky sack. <laughs> I saw a thing yesterday about Mia's hairstyle. And it was showing oh. like all these girls that are doing that hairstyle. And I saw someone yesterday, super tough, like these super empowered women. And it was, and they were all like her age or in their early, you know, like her age up to the early twenties. And yeah. it said something about, you know, the new women are strong as hell and have no time for hair products. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I was like, that is so cool. So the timing of it is actually really great for her because she just got so much going on right now in her life. Just like lots of academic type and time demands on her. Um, she's in her toughest year of high school right now. All these colleges are soliciting her. She's trying to think about her grades and she's in all these AP classes and plus taking that college course and she's doing an internship and she has all these, uh, you know, she took an extra class. It's an AP class. That there's actually no actual class for so um, anybody who's in that class, which a bunch of juniors are, they sign up for that class and it's all like done on their own personal time. So they get the assignments with no instruction other than what's, you know, comes with the packet and then they have to find time in their own time to do it. And it gets counted as a grade, um, as a class. So, uh, so she's trying to rake up all the a AP classes right now because they don't really offer AP classes at her school till junior year. I don't know if that's standard at all schools, all high schools. Um, so last year was kind of kicked back, beat up a lot. Total opposite this year. It is like pedal to the metal. And so she's like, I'm stressed. Life is really hard right now. And um, it's kind of funny. We're just like, well, welcome to what adults <laughs> <be> like. <clears throat> 
it doesn't get really better. <laughs> having no like hair to have to deal with has been like the best thing. She's like, I can't even believe how fast my showers are. It's so easy to wake up and I have bed head. Like, it's actually and I really carry fun. a bag of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And we all have long hair. Like think about the time we put into our hair. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm like the opposite of her uh, in that, in that sense, you guys, you know, what kinds of conversations do you have with your closest friends is kind of a really great segue into how do you choose your friends? Like, how do you, like, I I have a lot of clients who deal with um, trying to find the right kind of friends that they need for for what they're doing in their life. So they do all this personal development work. <clears throat> they get to a level where they're in a zone, right? They're in like a, a flow, a zone, or like a place and a phase in their life where they're sort of um, breaking away from the pack, at least in terms of like uniqueness, authenticity, and just like their own vision of where they want to go, their purpose, their, their mission, their legacy, right? <clears throat> um, and so they're finding that they are, you know, they're not having as many friends who align with them in this way. And so they're, they are feeling sometimes a little bit lonely, you know, or they're trying to create friendships with people uh, based on history that doesn't serve them now. And so there, it gets very frustrating for them. So when it comes to, you know, finding the right friends, like how have you guys dealt with that? Well, except for you guys, really all my friends are uh, lifelong friends. So, and I'm really, I know Paula hates when I say this, but I'm super introverted and she swears I'm not, but <laughs> I am. And I have to have like a deep connection. I, the intimacy of a true friendship is what is good for me. So like superficial friends or whatever that like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I really don't have, you know, except for people probably on Facebook, but, you know, I have a small circle and, you know, I value those people and I probably wouldn't trade them for any amount of money. And you guys too. I mean, you know, oh, well. <laughs> She's like, I have friends except for you guys. So just letting you know, you're going to be cut soon. You won't be in my life. No, I meant like <laughs> friends I've had since I was 10 years old. I haven't known you guys since I was 10. <laughs> I've known you guys since I was 29. <laughs> I'm totally messing with you. <clears throat> Kelly, how about you? How do you choose your friends, the kinds that you would have the conversations with? that are different than, you know, just every day. Not, I mean, not that it wouldn't be every day, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's been interesting just, uh, you know, getting to the point where I'm at now. Um, I'm, I, I listen to my gut a lot. So it's very like, I know when I mesh with somebody, mm-hmm. not always right away, but um, you know, if there's somebody that like, kind of sticks in my head after a while like oh that person's really cool or I'd like to get to know them better and then we can start having those really cool conversations um I I think in some ways like I'll see in people um aspects about them that um Mm -hmm. uh, like like trigger in me something that I want you know so almost like I guess that would be me leveling up to to them or a trait about them that I like you know somebody that's super adventurous or you know, I, cause that's something that I would like to have is a little bit more, um, adventurous heart. You know, I mean, I think I have an adventurous soul. It's just acting on that. Um, you know, cause there's even friends, like one of my best friends, I wasn't, you know, we were, went to college together, but we weren't very good friends in college. We, we clicked really, really awesome after college. And, you know, so, and she, I mean, we just have the best time, but we have the, you know, really good conversations too. So, um, I think it's just that, you know, it's like an attraction kind of like my husband, you know, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's interesting how that whole thing happens because I, I am an introvert, not, you know, not as outward as Michelle is, but, um, <laughs> but I understand what you say about introverted. Cause it's not like, I don't mean it as, um, shy guys. I used to be shy. 
Um, I mean it more like I, I love to be in a party situation and I, but I like blow my wad all at one time. And then I need to come back to being <laughs> quiet and you know, it's like, and then I have to re-energize. See, so. I don't like a party situation. It makes me so uncomfortable, like more than five or six or seven people. And I just go to the, like, I'll go to the kitchen and start washing people's dishes. Serious. I'm not talking big, big parties, but I, I like, I have to gear up for it, but I go there and like, I get a ton of energy from all these people, but then I crash and mm -hmm. I can't like, I can't do it two days in a row. It's really hard for me to do it two days in a row. Um, cause we've had things. It's like, oh, I just, I don't know if I can, you know, be on for this, you know, because I, I, I did it all yesterday. I was glam and glorious yesterday, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> But I do need that re recharge and because um, I do like my quiet time, um, but I like to be vocal and I like to be out and socializing. And so I don't know, I think I'm attracted to like, you know, the fun people, um, but I don't always click with the fun people either. So I don't know. That's a hard question, Paula. <laughs> You know, there's so many different like personality tests. I know some people hate those. Uh, like, I don't want to be labeled. Don't give me one of those tests. Um, but they're great for, I think they're great for just like kind of general broad sweeping type of, uh, you know, you want to kind of like z zone in on or hone in on uh, some character traits that could help you have an in for a conversation uh, that uh, it's helpful in that way. But if you're going to have a deep relationship with someone, then that's not, it's not really going to be the go-to tool. Uh, but for me, in terms of like when I select friends, First of all, I can be friends with like what I would consider really solid friends with someone and I don't need to speak with them all the time. I, you know, and they don't need to speak with me. I do not need to hear from them constantly to feel like we're solid. Uh, we can talk to each other once a month or once every six months or whatever it is, depending on, you know, how busy our schedules are, what we got going on. And I'm, it's for me very easy to pick up where we left off. <clears throat> that said, I do believe that there are people who should be in your life as friends that you have more contact with on a regular basis than that. Uh, and for me, I find myself drawn to the people who are doing things that I'm doing, you know, not, not like they got to jump on with what I'm doing necessarily, but we find that we're on a similar path and we inspire each other and we get excited about talking uh, about the things that we're doing that we love. And we want to collaborate and do things together because we love talking about the things in the path that we're on so much. And so I find that that, that seems to be the thing that really um, stands out that where relationships for me, friendships for me start to build around. Um, and that makes sense, right? Like when we're finding people who have things in common with us, uh, that obviously it makes sense. Um, and, and so because of that, I also find that I kind of have a bit of a, um, like a changing of the friends every so often, you know, not because. Well, uh Oh, I'm she's telling friends. us something, Michelle. Close friends. Close friends. Consider yourself notified. <laughs> Official notification. <laughs> um, and it's not about, not that we stop being friends. It's just that we maybe spend less time together because we're both crushing it on the path that we're on and it's going slightly different ways. Um, but we're always cheering each other on and that kind of stuff, but we're not collaborating as much as we were. So the time together is not as often. And then you kind of move into a new group, whatever direction you're going, like you're always trying to surround yourself. In, in my opinion, if you're doing it smart, you're trying to surround yourself with people who are on the same path as you. So everywhere you go, every which direction you end up going, um, there are people on that part of the path that you know, that you should make an effort to bring close to you during that time because you guys help each other there and then you move on to something else, you know, um, and some, sometimes some people keep going with you and some people need to, they need to do their thing, you know, and we celebrate that, but that's kind of how I see, that's how I've experienced uh, friendships uh, for me personally, um, it hasn't always been well received. <laughs> um, but I think it's interesting what you said too that's important to me that I have those kind of friends that um I don't have to you know be babysitting the relationship 
you know, like it's no, there's no neediness involved. Like it can be, like you said, we can talk once a week, we can once a month or in six months, we just absolutely picked up right where we left off, mm -hmm. you know? And I think part of that is, you know, having those more intimate connections where, you know, you don't need to be checking on people all the time. Like for whatever reason, people get busy or they're, like you said, they're crushing it or they get ill or something, who knows what happens, but it's not always easy to, to maintain relationships like that. So if you have those deep connections, I think that is absolutely the best. And if you have somebody that doesn't understand that your time commitments to other things that are, that are benefiting your life and your family's life, you know, you're not taking away from them, but I, you know, there's been so many situations where, you know, we've talked to people or it's happened to us where, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, you know, how come you're not talking to me? Or, you know, it's like, well, it's nothing against you. It's just that, you know, I'm doing these 10 other things. So when you have those connections, I think it's, you know, that's beautiful. So yeah. that to me would be what I would consider closest friends. Somebody who, who understands my path to the point when they see me like really going for it, even if that means that that pulls me a little bit away from them, at least the way that we've experienced things before. And they still stand there and just go, you freaking go, Paula, just right. go for it. Just pedal to the metal. Don't worry about me. I'm cheering you on the whole way. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you here. I'll meet you there, whatever. We'll, we'll make it work, but just go. Like when I have those kinds of friends to me, like that's a lifetime friend for me. Somebody who has that kind of attitude, not somebody who makes me feel guilty or bad for um, going the pace that I am or going in the direction that I am. Um, but instead they're, they're cheering. They're not jealous. They're not, you know, negative about it. They don't talk shiz about me behind my back <laughs> because of what I'm doing um, in terms of like the direction that I'm going. That would, that to me is um, what I would, what I would consider a close friend, even if we don't talk a lot. And I'll do the same. Like, I'll cheer them on too, whatever it is that they're doing. And, um, and not, no judgment, right? Just support. Yeah. I, that, I think you can tell the difference, like to dovetail off of what you both said is when, like Michelle said, oh, it's nothing against you. It's just, I'm busy. But the really good friend goes, oh, God, I get it. You go, girl. Right. The person who's not that good, close, deep friend is going to go, oh, she's too busy for me. Oh, my God. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's totally, that's, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. What I know is this. We have one shot, one lifetime to get our legacy, our mission, our purpose um, where we want it to be. And I say this to my clients all the time, and I believe this, and it's not narcissistic at all. It's just real. Uh, we are the, the star of our show, our legacy show. And unlike uh, in show business, if the star doesn't show up, the show goes on. They just replace that, that star. And uh, in our legacy, no one, no one can step into our place and create our legacy. No one can, no one will. So it's just us. So if we're slowing our pace because we're pacing somebody else to make them feel more comfortable, we're just saying basically that our legacy is not important enough to us to fight for. And we're also having to have the realization that we're surrounding ourselves with people who um, are slowing us down, who aren't really caring about what we're going for. And there's, you know, maybe something going on within ourselves that uh, we're choosing to bring people like that into our lives. So, uh, you know, there's a graceful way for sure to communicate, right, to people um, if it's necessary uh, what's going on so that they, you know, if they're taking it personal, you know, you have to, you know, have that moment where you try to explain to them. And then at that point, then it's like, you just got to do your thing. You know, you just got to do you. And that's why it's important to always be around people who are supportive and on a similar path that you're on. Because when you're going for your legacy, you're trailblazing. And that can feel very, um, I don't want to say lonely, but it can, it can, it's art. Sometimes it's, it's like, it's tough. Like it's like, it's weed whack. It's like jungle, like in the jungle, like clearing out a path, right? All the time. You're just always working for that. And so you don't want to like be 
trying to work and someone over here going, I can't believe you. You're, you're not waiting for me. You know, like, <laughs> you're just going to turn around and go. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like when you Paula says you're going, getting the X, you're really getting yeah. the city. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Samurai sword. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, like the, I like the friends who are like, you know what? Let me grab my sword and I'm going to go in there and I'm help you. And then we'll work on yours for a little bit. And then you take your machete and you come with me and we'll work on mine a little bit. So yeah, like, I love that. That I love and think is the coolest thing that's out there. That's how I feel like really good friends help each other. Um, well, and I'm, I'm a Taurus. So I am like loyal 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 to a fault to my friends so all you have to say is so and so is doing this like, okay who do i have to beat up Where, <laughs> what do i need to do <laughs> you know, yeah. i'm very very protective of my friends yeah i totally hear you i'm your dog same thing i'm very loyal i don't know if i would go like beat up anybody i'd just be like dude why are you oh i would i tell people oh, i would too. Like, I, I, I gotta be like move on i got a 6500 pound truck who are we <laughs> running over? You were hurting you. Who different. are we running over? <laughs> Seriously. I just gonna girl, get your machete. Let's go forward. Let's not well, I call that the, the lay in tra- the people I would lay in traffic for. And there mm-hmm. are people that I would do anything for, you know? For sure. So, mm-hmm. And those people know. I mean, those people know no matter what. If even if I turn down the the part the barbecue invitation or you know my reasons for not being able to go do social things are a little bit different but they understand that if something happens you know like they're in the hospital or they're having a surgery or something like that I'm going to be there it doesn't matter like I, when it's the, the important time I will be there for them mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah it's awesome it's really it's really interesting you know I we have these conversations sometimes with hero moms and hero mom nation. And we find that women, the women in our group sometimes struggle with having the right kind of friends around them um, or feeling like they have a solid group of friends around them. And as I, as I coach my clients, they're in the same, you know, they're in the same boat in terms of like friends, like how do you find really great solid friends it's not easy when you're super focused and you're really determined and you're on a very specific path that's a little harder to get the right people around you than when you're just kind of aimlessly floating through life and I don't mean that as a disrespectful thing that was me for 40 years so uh when and when you're in that state it's really easy someone says oh this is going like cool I'll go there and then someone says, oh, this is going on. Cool. I'll, I'll go over there. You know, you're just like going where, wherever things are popping up. And it's so much easier to um, have a sort of a false sense of connection there. In my opinion, for me, that way was, was a very false sense of connection. Uh, just being around people doesn't mean you're having quality connections. At least it wasn't like that for me. Um, <clears throat> but having laser focus and, uh, and people supporting you the whole way, it just doesn't, that doesn't always happen. Right. I, don't, I don't think that ever happens. I don't know any go-getter who's really going for it and who's laser focused that way where they don't have people in their life on their path as they're going that aren't going, I can't believe she's not doing that. I can't believe she's doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who are, uh, and some, some will, and sometimes even trying to sabotage them. I've had that. I've definitely had that happen. And it, it was heartbreaking, really, really heartbreaking. Um, when I first saw that, because I really, really admired and um, looked up to some of those people. And I just couldn't believe that they would do that when they were part of the reason why I was able to get where I was and that I wanted to keep going. So, you know, it just happens. I had to get thick skin and understand what real friends were really about. <clears throat> but it's important. And those aren't easy to find. So when you do hold on to them, I love this someone saying James, not it wasn't James Cameron. That's a movie guy. Um, <laughs> other guy. The Titanic. Some guy. Yeah, so there was a something Cameron guy uh, that Aaron and I went to go see once, and, and he he talked about when you have quality people in your life, you gotta handcuff them. And that sounds like counterintuitive because <laughs> that makes <laughs> like they're bad. Uh, but what he basically meant was 
um, make sure you give them reasons to not want to leave, you know, so find out what makes them tick, what makes, what brings them joy, what do they geek out on and uh, bring that into the relationship. So they want to stick around uh, and nurture that. And he was talking in terms of like, if you're a, an employer or a team leader or something like that. But I think that that's true with friends. Uh, my, our mentor, Brendan Burchard recommends 10, 10 to 15, I think he says, or something like that what he calls growth friends. These are people who are <clears throat> like totally kicking butt in life, who have things in common with you, who you enjoy, you wanna go on adventures with, you trust them with your children, um, you speak to them at least once a month, you know, these kinds of things, maybe even more often once a week. Uh, and these are the kind of people, if you have these people around you, you grow faster because you guys, push each other or you carry each other, lift each other up. And the more of those kinds of friends that you have, the faster your growth is going to be. And it makes so much sense, but it's not easy to get that level of friend. So when I'm coaching my clients and if I'm real with myself and I ask them, how many growth friends do you have? And then after they hear the description of what a growth friend is, they're like, gosh, I have like maybe, I, I hear numbers anywhere from like one to five. Five is high. Like mostly it's two, one or two when they hear that description. And so it's kind of an awakening like, wow, having friendships like that is a skill. That's not something that just happens. You have to work at that. You have to master that skill to have, to have those people in your life and you have to keep nurturing that. And that's why it's hard for some people to have that many, but imagine if all your closest friends, 10 to 15 or 20 of your closest friends were ones that were excelling in life, who were supporting you the whole way, cheering you on. They're the ones that you're having adventures with and like these are masterminding and your problem is their problem. Their problem is your problem. Like nobody gets stuck, no man left behind. Everybody's just like making sure everyone keeps plowing forward. Can you imagine like, what life would be like if you had that many of those kinds of friends. <clears throat> this is why it's so huge to do that. I'm working on it. <laughs> I've got a I, solid, I have a solid little core group of friends, um, but I don't have that many. I don't have, you know, 15 or 20 yet. So yeah, I think it's, it's hard. And we hear hero moms talk about, you know, oh, it's, you know, at our age, it's really difficult to find friends, but I, I would challenge them to say, you know, where are you holding back? Because when we're six and seven years old, you know, we're on the playground and we're running up to groups of girls going, I want to play, you know, we're not doing that at age 48. And I think, I mean, I'm talking about the other people, but you know, you're not saying I want to play this game. I want to be part of this, you know? So um, you need to speak up and find out where you're holding back on that. I mean, are you just looking from afar and hoping, or are you actually taking action towards, you know, um, having friendships like that? Mm -hmm. Well, and think about, I just had this conversation with my mom and my mother-in-law recently, and both of them are at a stage in life where their friends, either they had friends like from work that kind of fell by the wayside once they retired, or their friends our siblings or cousins or whatever that have passed away and they're not on Facebook they don't do social media and they're both you know really have no friends you know and it was really sad to me to have that conversation with both of them you know because mm -hmm. you don't think about that when you're you know where we are that 20 25 years down the road who's still going to be with us yeah you know so yeah, it was really sad. And I felt like, well, I didn't have an answer. You know, I'm like, well, you could get on Facebook. And they're like, I, <laughs> you know, my mother-in-law doesn't even have the internet. You know, she can't get on Facebook. So, and my mom thinks that Facebook is something about the man. <laughs> the man will watch me if I get on Facebook. Well, my yeah. parents are like kind of old hippies. But yeah, my mom, she's afraid of Facebook. She thinks it's something else so it's but it's sad to me that both of them are fabulous people that have so much to give and they don't 
they don't really have anybody that they can confide in, mm. you know? So think about that, that what the seeds you're planting now, or this, the, the garden that you're nurturing from, you know, earlier in your life, you know, hopefully those people are still going to be around when, you know, when we get older, you know? Yeah. So I saw I it. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I think it's just a different mindset too. Like when my mom was my age, she was just thinking about sliding into retirement. Okay. You work for X amount of years, you have a retirement plan and then you retire and you garden or whatever, travel or whatever. (laughs) Right. And so we're, you know, at our age, almost 50 taking on this new adventure and not even thinking about that. You know, not thinking about when am I going to retire or what am I going to be doing when I'm 70? I don't see myself doing anything different at 70. I mean, I still want to be active and, you know, doing important work. So I think it's a generational thing as well. But I think it's really important that you think about those kind of things where, you know, where, where am I going to be 30 or 25 years from now? And who's going to still be there with me? Yeah, I saw a a saying, and I'm probably getting it wrong, but um, you can't eat the fruit tomorrow from the seed you plant today. Right. You know, it doesn't happen. It's, you know, it's a whole growing process. And I know because my lime tree ain't giving me limes right now. I got two two this year from my lime tree. Oh, oh, I was going to say, I thought you have two lime trees. I'm like, come on over and get in the bag full. I got a bunch of sweet limes on my lunch tree right now. Yay. I got about mm. 4 million oranges, though. Mm, I don't <laughs> like oranges. You don't like oranges? Not oh. really. Oh, it's, a, it's a mouth thing. It's a feel thing. It's putting those, yeah. Mm, mm, I, I love oranges. And I can't chew on those. Like, no? No. Oh, man, Sorry, we're totally off track now. <laughs> I know, right? So join um, us in here on Nation. I don't, I, don't I don't like bacon. She that. doesn't like oranges. <laughs> what the heck? Who doesn't I, like bacon? Oh my god, doesn't like oranges. <laughs> I loved him when I, I was pregnant. Like la, 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 la. <laughs> la, la, la. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this morning. If you love these conversations, Join us in here, Mom Nation. We're hanging out in there. There's other amazing, amazing women. It's for women only. So if you're a dude and uh, you know one of the ladies in your family who would really enjoy these kinds of conversations, introduce her to that link and have her join us in there. It's a free group where we focus on health. Uh, we focus on our mindset. We, we focus on positive thinking and, and building out legacies for ourselves, our legacy, our hero mom legacy. Uh, that's so important for us. We emphasize that a lot. And we know in order for us to be, have that aspirational vision of where we want to go in terms of our legacy, we got to start first with being healthy. This has to be healthy. Otherwise, it's really difficult to move forward at the pace that we want and have the confidence to go for the things that we want, or even to have the, the confidence to dream of what we really, truly actually want. So that's why we start with health. And we have awesome programs for that if they're interested, but we also just have really great people in the community. We talked about friends. We talked about surrounding yourself with people who are uh, like you on a similar path. This is a great community for uh, the women out there, for all you women out there to meet the people who are more like you, who are really going for things where they can support you, gather around and lift each other up. So click on that link, join us in there. We'd love to meet you and hang out with you there. Otherwise, we'll see you guys Monday morning. Yay. Have a great weekend. weekend. Oh, jinx. You owe me a Coke? No, Coke. <laughs> no, Coke. No, Coke. No, Coke. No, Coke. <laughs> a coffee. Okay, sounds good.